In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to host 3CX in Binary Lane. After you've signed up, you'll be taken straight into the M panel so you can create your first server. So from here, you go to the top right there and click View All. Under Operating System, you select Linux and Debian 9. This setup is locked to 64-bit, but that's what we want anyway. Now you can scroll down and select your server resources. As you can see, you've got your resource options there. CPU, RAM, disk space, and monthly data transmission, plus the price on the right. These specs are fine for me, so I'll move on. Under server settings, you've got to choose a host name. Enter the host name that you'll use for your 3CX instance. Select if you want backups done by binary lane or not, then proceed to payment details on the next page. Once you have filled out your details and you're trying to send yourself the validation SMS, you may find it gives you an error and you can't send yourself the validation SMS. Most of the time it's because the session has timed out, so you'll need to log out and log back in and do the whole thing again. Now if we send the SMS, it should be successful. Fill out the rest of the form and continue with the payment details below. Once you're done, click on complete purchase. Just be aware the system does take a dollar out of your account straight away, just to confirm that the credit card's correct. Then the server build starts. Once it's finished, you receive login credentials. These credentials are used to log into the server directly via SSH, if you ever need to do that. You also receive them via email. Hit close, then up the top, click on the gear. And under disk, click on snapshots, backups, and ISOs. Up the top, click on the upload tab, and then select create new temporary image. If you're logged into your 3CX customer portal, you can go to Downloads. And in here you'll see the latest link to download the ISO for Linux. Or if it's easy for you, go to Google and search for 3CX Debian ISO. It should be the first result. Scroll down about halfway when you find the Debian for 3CX section. Right click on the link and click on copy link location. Then you go back to binary lane and paste it into the URL field. Once you get the green tick, click on start upload. Okay, once the upload's done, up the top click on Attach and Boot CD.
Ok now that's done, you can start the 3CX install. Enter your 3CX hostname. Select the language. Select the location. Keyboard map. And select a root password to get into this GUI. Select your location for your time zone. For the partition, select guided, use entire disk. Select your virtual disk, there should only be one. Select all files in one partition. Select finish partitioning and unite changes to disk. Select yes to confirm you're sure with everything. This will take a while so I'll just cut to the end. Once it finishes, click on detach CD up the top. And confirm. Most of the time you'll get this no response error. You'll have to click on false shutdown. This will take some time so I'll just cut to the end. Select option 1, 3CX version. Agree to the license agreement. Once it does the final reboot, it'll give you two options. Enter number 1 so you can continue with the web browser. Once you press 1 and enter, you'll be presented with the URL so you can connect to the web browser. Open up a new browser tab and enter the public IP address with the ports you're presented with. When you signed up to 3CX, you would have received an email with your key, or if you got access to the customer portal, you will find it in there as well. Or if you're restoring from a backup, select Restore from Existing Backup. Create some secure credentials that you'll use to access the 3CX system. Confirm that's your public IP address of the new instance you've created. Confirm it's a static IP. Enter the FQDN you've been entering throughout the whole install. These are the default system ports. This is the only chance you'll get to change them. If you do change them, take a screenshot. There should only be one network adapter. Click next. Now all this takes a few minutes, so I'll skip to the end. Pick your extension length. I would recommend 4 or 5 digits, if you pick 2 or 3 your customer could outgrow that numbering plan and you're going to have to rebuild the whole 3CX system. Enter the admin email. Select your country and time zone. Now you have to enter the operator extension. I usually make this my extension so I can do my testing. On this page you select the countries the user is allowed to call. In this case it's only Australian calls. Select your preferred language package. And now you wait. After this you'll be able to log into your 3CX PBX. And it's done. Make sure you save the details in a safe place.
Once you've saved the details, click on the 3CX domain name that you've got there. It'll take you directly to the 3CX login. You can get in with the username and password that you just saved. This is the operator extension we just created, so you can go ahead and use your 3CX app to scan that QR code. Now you're looking at the main 3CX dashboard. One of the first things I do, I run the firewall tool. But before that, we have to go back into binary lane, go back to that gear at the top, and select firewall. Once you're in the firewall editor, you can enter the rules in there manually. Or if you've got a template, click on import export. This is the template that I use. It'll be in the description below. If it was helpful, just smash that like button. It really helps me out. Once you've pasted the template, click on save and apply. Then back to editor. All you need to do now, under destination address, select your server public IP. Then hit save and apply. Once that saves, go back to your 3CX system and run the firewall checker. Now that's done, go back to dashboard and there should be a green tick next to firewall. Now you're ready to configure the system. Thank you for watching. If this video was of any value, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.